I have a few announcements before I begin my homily today, my friends. And as you know, I, the longer the announcements, the shorter the homily, right? <laughs> the Jesse Tree delivery is this afternoon, immediately following Mass in the gym. So if you can help in any way, my friends, please do so. That would be a great help. But also, thank you for buying the gifts. Many of you bought gifts that were on the tree, and you know, in a very real and profound way, you truly, truly impact a whole lot of families with your generosity and help them make Christmas for them. So thank you for that. Also this afternoon at two o'clock is Confessions. It, there'll be seven priests here this afternoon. It's no service, it starts at two o'clock, so just come and hear confessions. You know, if, if you get here beyond, beyond quarter after, the chances are the lines will be longer. Because you know, the, the, the earlier you get there, you'll hear confessions, and then once they start wearing off, the priests will go. I hope you take advantage of this, my friends. I truly do. You know, take a half an hour out this afternoon. I know we're busy. But you know, we carry so much stuff with us, don't we? We all have burdens and stuff that we carry with us. Confession is a great way to get rid of that. It truly is, so I, I hope you take advantage of it. It's a wonderful way to prepare for Christmas. And finally, there's an article in the bulletin called Peace in Your Soul, and I, I encourage you to read it. It talks about how you obtain that, and it's very short, but it talks about stillness. You know, we live in very, this is a hectic time. We're all pulled in many directions. There is a lot of activity and a tremendous amount of demands and expectations placed on all of us. And that causes great stress. When you couple demands and expectations on us, it causes stress. And of course, stress gets us unsettled. Being still, it's just saying, just sit for a certain period of time. That stillness brings peace into our hearts and our minds. So I encourage you to, to do that. There were two twin brothers that were in the same town. One was a physician, one was a doctor. And on Monday morning, somebody ran into the doctor and said to him, Pastor, what a great sermon you preached yesterday. He said, oh, no, no, he said, that, that was my brother, he said. He said, he preaches and I practice. <laughs> but we need to do both, don't we? We need to preach with our lives, right? We need to preach with our lives. St. John, John the Baptist says in the gospel today, are you the one who is to come or should we look for another? It sounds like a very simple question, but what's he asking there? He's in prison, and he knows he's gonna die. There's no doubt about that. He's convinced of that, and he knows it. And so he asks his disciples, is this the one who I've been preaching about? Is this the Jesus? Do you know why he's asking that? Because he wants to know if this is worthwhile. And what I'm doing is this the one I'm, because if he's the one, then it is worthwhile. But if it's not, this is all in vain. See, all these doubts started coming to his head and he was looking for certitude. He was looking for certitude and conviction. And isn't that what we need and want? There was a little girl, her name was, her name was Shia. She was four years old. And she wanted to hold her little baby brother, a newborn a newborn, and she kept asking her parents over and over again, can I just hold him? And of course, I'm, I'm assuming that's natural for mom and dad to say, wait, wait till the baby's a little older or you're a little older before you do that. And so they were putting her off. And then they saw this little four-year-old girl go into his bedroom when they were just putting him to sleep. And she puts her head next to his and he says to, and she says to him, baby, tell me what God feels like. I'm starting to
to forget. Interesting, isn't it? The parents saw her sneak in, and there was a crack in the door, and they heard this little girl say that. I'm starting to forget. She was looking for, for certitude to get rid of the doubt, wasn't she? And you know, my friends, it's a good thing for all of us to pray, isn't it, during these upcoming days to Christmas, to pray for that certitude of our faith, that conviction. Because isn't that what we need today? When we have that certitude and conviction, we can overcome so much. God bless you.